Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. It's been a minute, but I'm so glad you were able to join me today. I've been reading the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, I haven't gotten to John yet, but I have started to um, do my Bible study one chapter a day because every time I tried in the past to get to, you know, reading Bible verses or they would sometimes have a little schedule where I would have to read um, one chapter of the Old Testament and then one chapter of the New Testament. That didn't work out. I was doing it for, for maybe a day or two and then I stopped doing it. So this is really working out. I'm taking it one chapter a day. And um, I really wish in hindsight I had started when I was at Matthew 1. But I am um, in the book of Luke right now, and I'm at Luke chapter 22, and I wanted to just read it and kind of give you um, my inspiration from it um, that the Holy Spirit has revealed to me. Um, things that have happened then, of course, are happening right now as far as, um, you know, people being among you but not being with you in spirit. There's no solidarity, even though there are people who are in your presence surrounding you daily. And this really caught my eye. I just said, this is really why the state of the world will remain the way it is until Jesus returns. Um, but I will start reading um, and I will expound later. Okay, so chapter 22, this is Luke chapter 22. And verse one, <clears throat> now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. I'm going to stop right there just because we have to note that um, the chief priests and the scribes, the chief priests, of course, in the church, the priests and the synagogues, okay? And the scribes were the writers of the Old Testament, of the scriptures. They interpreted and translated um, scriptures, uh, the laws. They were the people responsible for that. Now, they are acting as though they are, what? A mob, a mafia. Because they are trying to um, put a hit out on Jesus. They were constantly conspiring, constantly plotting how they might kill him, but for fear of the people. You see, they feared the people. And I'm going to come back to that a little later about how important the people, being together of the people, by the people, for the people. If the people can come together, we're a force to be reckoned with. Okay? So... Moving on to verse three, then entered Satan, Satan into Judah, named or surnamed Iscariot. Let me reread. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Now, as we know, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, who betrayed Jesus. So, even though he walked with Jesus. His heart was far from him, correct? For him to be able to, for the devil, first of all, to be able to enter into him. Because when you're possessed by the devil, that means that you don't have any Holy Spirit in you to, to, to fight or resist it, okay? You have to lend yourself to that spirit, that deity, or not deity, but that spirit, that evil spirit. He's not deity, he's an evil spirit. So forgive me, that was a misspeak. And so, yes, um, Judas was already in his mind, in his heart against Jesus. So this was easy, very easy for um, the devil, Satan, to enter into him, okay? Okay, so verse four, and he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. Verse five, 
verse five, and they were glad and covenanted to give him money. So what is this? This is a hit. It's a contract to put a hit on Jesus. Yes, they exchanged. Uh, they had a conversation. They communed together. They made an agreement. They made a, a contract, a, a contractual agreement to be paid for a hit. And so it just lets you know that just because people are around you and seem to be with you and of you and for you does not mean that that is so. Doesn't make it true at all, does it? Because people can pretend, they fake it, just to get what they want or need from you. And so for these people who are in the church, people who are supposed to be godly, but in the church, in these synagogues, synagogues of Satan, because clearly for, for after Judas was possessed by Satan, when, in, when Satan entered into him, Judas was able to go with the chief priests and captains and it says they were glad. They, they, they received him very well. So they were basically just hanging out with the devil at that point. And they were all devilish. So don't let people fool you into believing that the devil is not in the church or that he can't be and he can't be used by people who are in the church because clearly, yes, oh, he can. You have to just be a willing vessel. And if there is or if there's fruit of the flesh, you see, because we have fruits of the spirit and then the fruits of the flesh are the, you know, covetousness, envy, scorn, you know, all of those things that are, be, they're being able to be used by the devil. He can, he can tap into that, that energy, if you will, that negative, demonic, um, evil that is the opposite of, of course, the fruits of the spirit. So whatever the fruits of the spirit are, the love, patience, long suffering, forbearance, that is the flip side of what the, the fruits of the flesh are. Okay. So that is what they were tapped into. And so they made a covenant together or a contract. Okay. So verse six, and he promised and sought opportunity to betray him. Who was him? Jesus. He sought an opportunity to betray Jesus unto them in the absence of the multitude. So once again, they wanted to be away from the people because they feared the people. They didn't want a big audience. They knew the people were followers of Jesus, that they believed Jesus, they worshiped Jesus. Jesus had healed so many. He healed the sick. He healed the blind. He um, healed those who were possessed by demons and, and devils. He, he made them clean again. He delivered them from all these things and afflictions. So, but these people in secret, in, in this little secret society, this little secret pact, they decided to plot against Jesus, how they would set him up to be betrayed and then ultimately to be killed. But they had to make sure that they were, they were away from the people. And that is why it is so important for the people to be on one accord. Because that is how the enemy works. He wants to divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. So as many divisions as they can have among the people, the better for them. Because they, what? They feared the people in mass. So they wanted to be away from the people so they could carry out this evil plan. So verse seven, then came the day of unleavened bread, which is the Passover, when the Passover must be killed. I'm going to read this again. I reread it, but I read it wrong. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. So 
So this, the Passover, of course, originated from the Old Testament when Moses went to Pharaoh and told him, let my people go. You know, the Lord said, the Lord by God said to let his people go. Let my people go. And Pharaoh refused. So, of course, plagues were sent unto Pharaoh. And he was still with a hardened heart, did not release the people until the people were told. So Moses told the people, put lamb's blood over your doorpost and the angel of death will pass by, pass over, pass over your house. And any door that did not have that blood on the doorpost, the angel of death went inside and killed the, killed the firstborn child. So, first of all, obedience to God. The blood saves. And anyone without the blood were judged and were dealt with. You know, had a curse on them. Okay? And so... That is where the Passover came from. And of course, when the people, when the children of Israel were leaving, they didn't have time to put yeast and let the bread rise. They just said, he said, make it unleavened, the flat bread, sort of like pita bread. Just make it like that. So that for your journey, and because clearly after, after the firstborn died, the firstborn children died, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Pharaoh released the people. He said, let them depart. But then, of course, we know the story that they still came back after the people and then they died in the Red Sea. But so getting back to this, um, Jesus is the Lamb of God, right? Jesus is the Lamb of God. And he, it had to be fulfilled that his blood, right, the the He's the Lamb of God whose blood was shed, had to be shed to save the world, okay? And verse 8, and he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare? So where do you want us to, to go prepare you or prepare a place for us? Where should we go? Which spot, in other words. Verse 10, and he said unto them, behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. Verse 11, and he shall say unto the good man of the house, the master saith unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. So even though, okay, so Jesus was God with us, with them at the time, but, you know, Emmanuel, God with us, who came down from heaven, became a mortal man, but he still had prophetic knowledge, okay? He still knew, you know, God revealed things, God the Father revealed things to him, the Holy Spirit revealed things to him, for him to know these things, like, you know, because you may say, well, he was a man, how did he know that, of who they would see? Well, or, you know, clearly in their travels, another part of it is that he might have just seen him in his travels, you know, he just knew these things, but, um, but I think mainly it was, he was inspired, you know, the Holy Spirit ghost revealed it to him that these things would happen okay because jesus was both god and man but he laid down his deity so that he could experience the full human experience okay but this is another example of how he he could know um you know because of 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 
because he, you know, the, the Holy Spirit was in him. The father was revealing things to him. They were very in tune with each other for him to know about, you know, the city and the man who they would meet, um, you know, bearing a pitcher of water. So, you know, definitely. Um, and so verse 11, and he shall say unto the good men of the house, the master saith unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there, make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. So of course, by faith, by obedience, they took him at his word and they found it as he had said unto them, you know, just obviously more confirmation. Now, by this point, they had seen him raise the dead, heal the sick, heal the blind, you know, um, the woman with the issue of blood. Um, they had seen him, you know, cast out devils and demons and make people clean. So, yeah. So this, you know, was probably just yet another, just confirmation, constantly confirmation, confirmation of who Jesus was is, was, um, was slash is, shall I say, and he shall show you a larger, okay, I read that, and, um, so verse 14, and when the hour was come, he sat down, and the 12 apostles with him, and he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, knowing what was To come knowing what was to come you know knowing that that was the point of him coming from heaven down from heaven to become a man so that he could teach preach and to be the sacrificial lamb of god so it says um verse 16 for i say unto you i will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. Well, guess who that included? Judas. Yeah. As they were partaking in the Lord's Supper, Judas, who was about to eat it unworthily because what? Who was in him? Satan. Yeah, Satan was still in him. He was, he was using him the whole time. But it says, and he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. Verse 18, for I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse 20, likewise, also the cup after, after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Verse 21, but behold, the hand of him, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. So Jesus is like, okay, yes, I know things. I know things. You've seen me in action. You've seen what I know, what I've taught. And don't think this is any different. So he was calling out the one who was going to betray him, right? When he said, but behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. Verse 22. And truly the son of man goeth as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Wow, that's powerful. Because <laughs> some people think, um, you know, this person is meek. This person is, you know, they forgive, they love, they, they pray, they heal. They take that as weakness 
according to the world standards, which the fruits of the, the flesh, which is to take, to kill, still destroy, basically Satan's children. So, or children of the devil. So yeah, um, to them, uh, they think, oh, you're a pushover. This is gonna be easy. But Jesus was just basically laying on, yes, I know what's ahead of me. I already understand my fate. But just know this, yes, I'm gonna do what my father wants me to do, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Praise God. Now, trust. I mean, Judas didn't, he, it wasn't like this was something um, like unexpected. We knew that, yes, this was going to happen. He knew, he knew that one of them was going to betray him. And, you know, so, excuse me, when, when God uses people, this doesn't mean that they're saved doesn't mean that they're one of God's chosen it's just that God can use whom he wants you know and um because it was manifold you see they don't they didn't know that these people were so um tunnel vision tunnel visioned because they were jealous of Jesus they hated his message they hated them they hated that he was calling them out and exposing their hypocrisy so that's all they were looking at. We've got to get rid of this man. We, you know, he, he is just ruining it for us, you know, but not realizing that they were a part of his plan, ha! that Jesus's plan, you see, they, while they were planning and scheming and plotting, they were all doing what, you know, what, within the plan of God, praise God, they were all doing what they were doing. That was all a part of God's plan. Hallelujah. And um, the final thing is, let's see. Whew. Verse 23, and they began to inquire among themselves, which of them it was that should do this thing. Let me read it again. And they began to inquire among themselves, which of them it was that should do this thing. Now, of course, you know, the infamous, um, the picture of the, you know, the last supper will, you know, they're like with their hands towards their chest and like, you know, looking desperate and, 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 you know, um, uh, asking, you know, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? You know, just for them, for any of them to believe, Oh, do I have that in me to betray you? No, I love you. How, how could I do such a thing? So they were kind of looking within themselves, like, is it, is it true? Is it possible that I could do this? I mean, I, I, I can't believe it. So it was really disbelief and just, you know, shock that, that, that one of them would be able to do this thing. But, um, so then it says, um, verse 24, and there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. <laughs> and isn't that pride? You see the devil, he will work on pride. He Pride is something that we all have. Oh, yes, we do. We have, you know, and some will use that and they will um, just like they love to edify themselves. And they want to, even in this situation, they're like, well, not me. I know I can't do it. I mean, I have, I've, I, I was a part of the ones who healed, you know, the sick and the blind and everything. And, and, and I have faith and I've seen everything he can do. And I love him more than you, you know, and, and just all of that, you know, the infighting, you know, like, well, you're probably the one who's going to do it. You know, I know what I do. You can just imagine what they were saying to each other and just to themselves or to Jesus. But, um, so yeah, so it's basically arguing of who is the greatest among them. Uh, Jesus is the greatest. Hello. Verse 25, and he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them and they that exercise authority upon them that are called benefactors. Let me read it again. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles, uh, uh, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors but ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you 
let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. Verse 27, for whether is greater he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. I'm going to read that again. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. So once again, Jesus going back to um, how Satan was trying to bring division into the twelve disciples among them he that his desire was to sift them as wheat to split them up to make them less than what they were and verse 32 but i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren and he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Now that's a hard saying, because of course, you know, we all believe that when the time comes for us to have to um, stand up for Jesus, acknowledge Jesus, um, worship Jesus, or just, you know, before men to say, yes, I am a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. This is what I stand for. I'm a follower of him. That you could be put in a situation where you deny him, deny that you're saved, deny that you, you know, know Jesus. To, to, to Peter, that was an impossibility. He's like, how in the world could I do that when right now in this moment, I feel so strong in my faith that I know that I'm willing to die for you or, and to die with you, to die with you, should I say, not for, but with, with. Um, and it says, and he said unto them, when I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, there are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. So they took swords. So they were equipped. They had, they were carrying, okay, weapons. So they had weapons with them. They were able to get their purse, their money, they were able to take whatever they needed, their their um, equipment or just the things that they needed to take with them on the trip. And he said, um, he that hath no sword, buy one. <laughs> Sell his garment and buy one. So get your swords. Have your swords ready. So they said, oh, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. 
and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while ye yet spake, and while he yet spake, verse 47, and while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Verse 49, when they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Mm. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, Be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves. Verse 53, When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me. But this is, is it, uh, verse 53, I'm sorry. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. So once again, Jesus going back to, yes, I know this is Satan's moment. Okay. You are children of the devil. Judas is a child of the devil. And this is his Satan's moment, his hour. Okay. Yeah. The power of darkness. This is your, this is just your only chance right now. Your only moment. Okay. Should I say just to, you know, to be over, you know, to, to have a so-called win, quote unquote. Um, although, as I said before, you know, they were all playing into the, the plan of the God of um, the most high God, that God's God's plan was being worked out and orchestrated, even though they were blind to that part. So verse 54, then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid behold, beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man also, this man was also with him. And he denied him saying, he denied him. He denied Jesus saying, woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, thou art also of them. And Peter said, man, I am not. You can imagine, you know, of course, he was like, man, I am not. I am not. 
59, and about the space of one hour after another, confidently affirmed, saying, of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. The cock crew, which is crowed, of course. I'm reading the King James Version. I like this version best. Verse 61, And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Because I would say human nature takes over when we're up against a wall, when we're basically surrounded by enemies, and when someone wants you to take a stand that is an opposition of the majority, you know. So similar to the chief priests and scribes, Peter feared the people. But he also feared the the army, you know, the soldiers, because what he felt in that upper room, everyone felt the love, the strength. They just, they did not believe that it, it was possible for any of them to be able to betray Jesus, definitely not to deny him. But as we see, Peter, who followed Jesus the most and who was asked to go you know, he was separated from the other 12 and, you know, he was one of the few um, among with also James and John, the brothers who were able to go with Jesus, you know, during his transfiguration and to see that and to, for him to be able to see all that he saw and to experience all things, but to be the one to deny Jesus. So that is definitely um, something that we need to remember that we have to stay in the word of God, in season, out of season. We have to know the word of God, be steadfast and movable. Even Jesus was praying, saying, if this is, Lord, if, if, if it's possible, if it's possible for this cup to pass from me, please let it pass from me. But he also said, not my will, but your will. So to the father, he was saying, your will be done. So that is what we have to pray for today. And these days, these last and evil days for God's strength, because we, we cannot by our own might, our own strength, do anything. It is only in the strength of Jesus. The Father gives us that through Jesus. And we have to pray, Have he says, to pray without ceasing. Watch and pray. And um, even though Satan's, dominion is for a short while he has his hour you know there will be an hour that he he's allowed to have but it is all a part of god's master plan praise god i'm going to end here today thank you so much for joining me and i hope to be able to um read more scriptures and verses in the future and but this really did touch me today because um you know it's something that we're all going through with you know, the elections coming up, wars, rumors of wars, um, earthquakes in diverse places, just everything that seems to be going awry with the world. Um, you know, people who just every, every aspect from every um, corner of the, of the world, we are seeing all of these different things happening and unfolding at once. So we have to truly pray steadfastly and be immovable and just have our faith in God, trust and believe him in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, until the next time, guys, thank you so much for joining me, but I will see you soon. You take care.